Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey, hey, and welcome to another fantastic Ask Engineer. We've got blinky suspenders. We have a nice new hat. We're ready to do the show. We're a little bit late because we're doing some audio checks. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah. Audio's uh, good now. Yeah. Uh, maybe everyone can uh, let us know how things sound. We have a new setup here. New audio. Yeah, it should be. New audio work. Should, should be a lot better yeah. than, it, than it was before. We have a couple uh, wireless mics and... Uh, should be should be working out. And we have MOSFET on the soundboard. Yeah. He's got his little paws and he's like pushing little potentiometers back and forth. Yeah. It's so cute. I wish you could so, see it. I'm also going to try something else. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, whoa. Yeah, so uh, if, some, if something breaks, sorry, I need to do one more thing. Okay. Are um, you really going to do that? Yeah, I am. Oh boy. And let's see. Okay. Well, okay. we'll see how it's going. Well, the world did not explode, so uh, I think we're good. All right. Rock it. We have these nice stools. You can see them. Like, I'm like a twisty yeah. stool. Like okay. This. Looks like it's working out. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. We're broadcasting also on uh, YouTube right now. So what? That's, that's what I turned on. Yeah. yeah why did you do that? Yeah. What's all that about? Yeah. What's so um, what uh, there's YouTube Live. There's YouTube. And there's also Ustream. So for the last four years, we've been using YouTube. Ustream. Yeah. Ustream. U U. Yeah. L U. Yeah. But uh, we're now trying to do both. So our account got activated for YouTube Live. YouTube Live. And we also. Uh, Which is like a live streaming thing. Yeah. My mom. Yeah, and so what we wanted to do is uh, give people a choice. You can watch it on Ustream or on YouTube. Um, what I don't know is um, uh, where it's at on YouTube right now. So it's somewhere on YouTube. Yeah. So so uh, just go to YouTube and just click on things, and eventually it'll show up. Yeah. So if someone goes to our YouTube channel right now, maybe you could um, post a link in the chat, and uh, someone can try it out. Yeah, we'll see if we uh, we exist there. We think we do. Yeah. So. All right. We'll try it out. Anyways. Um, okay. Anyways, we're here. Yeah. So let's. Uh, Blinky suspenders. Let's uh, let's let's get going on the show. Okay. On tonight's show. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's on tonight's show? Well, we'll talk about the show and tell that we had. Batman. Will this be the new Robin? We'll have stuff from the Adafruit Learning System. Time Travel Tuesday. Wearable Wednesday. 3D Thursday. Hi Day, new products, trivia questions, your questions, all that and more on Ask an Engineer. Okay. But I forgot to even like introduce, like, uh, yeah, I'm like Lady Anne of the Engineer and this is Phil. Yeah. The suspenders. So now you know who we are. Now we're all friends. Yeah. Here on um, the show. So as you get talking about some of the yeah. stuff, I'm going to do a little technical stuff because here's the unfortunate part. So I, I tested everything on Ustream earlier. And it worked. I'm like, oh, I just did a mini broadcast, and five people showed up. They're like, yeah. what's going on? Um, and then everything worked out. But then when we just started live, um, it said could not connect to Ustream. Ah. And so I removed YouTube as a setting just to start over and yeah. started this thing up. And it took four what's or five the, times. What's the benefits of YouTube, just having multiple sources well, in case not, like Ustream goes down? Not every, yeah, not everybody um, likes Ustream. And it's nice for us to have choices. And Does YouTube uh, have like ads in it? Uh, both, all of the streaming services have ads. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, part of the deal. Yeah. Okay. And uh, thank you for the folks uh, telling me to, to turn the, 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 the mics. I have um, Lamore is uh, quieter than I'm, me. Yeah, I'm not. So I turn yeah. her up and I turn me. I'm, I'm lowering you. You're like bit. very. Well, your mic is so close to you. Yeah, I can move my, my mic a little bit side. too. Yeah. There you go. I'll do that later. I'm not going to okay. mess with my mic. Yeah. So it looks like someone found the YouTube stream. Oh, great. So um, go click on it. If people if people don't mind. Um, All right. If people don't mind. I want to just see on our screen uh, what's happening. Well, why here. don't why don't I talk about the co discount code while you do that? Yeah, what's the what's the code, Lady Ada? This discount code is Father's Day 2013. That's a long discount code, but uh, it's easy to remember, and it's because Father's Day is what like this. this is it tomorrow? No, it's next. Next week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like it can't be tomorrow. Next week is Father's Day. Mother's Day was like a month ago, and uh, we have a lot of people here who uh, are dads, have dads. Most people have dads. <laughs> uh, about half the population approximately is going to become a dad um so yeah if you if you have a dad or you are a dad maybe you want to get something for your dad or get something for your kids we actually have a lot of people 
who do projects with their kids. Moms and their kids, dads with their kids, grandparents with their you know, nephews, whatever, nieces, aunts, whatever. People like to make kits together. That's a really popular thing. Or like they make an electronic project together. So get 10% off everything in the Adafruit shop. If it's in stock, and we have almost everything in stock, yeah. you get 10% off for you and uh, your dad or your dad. And it's for your kid. I don't know, whatever. All right. We had the show and tell. Yeah. It was glorious. Let's uh, talk about the show and tell. It yeah. was really short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, a lot of people, I think everyone, you know, it's really nice out today in, in New York. So maybe everyone's out, like, partying in New York. So uh, we had Philby who showed up and showed off his cat, Miss Toes. We had Raymond Bloom from, uh, he's at Google. He showed up um, last week or two weeks ago with his, uh, he had a Google um, bring your kids to work robot. And he's working on more robots. And it's a Clifford the dog. And he's working on it, and it's going to turn and find stuff. And uh, we also talked about um, we want to make an on-air sign. We want to make a sign like yeah. right here, and it will like blink on air when we're on air because we think that would be cool. And we want to do it with like the API, so we don't have to like turn it on. I want to make automatic. So like the question is, is it like XML or like how do you get this data? I don't know. Anyways, it was, it was a short show and tell. Maybe next week we'll have uh, like last week we had like thirteen thousand people show up. Yeah, it was too many people. So whatever. Um, Everybody who's on the show and tell gets a show and tell sticker. Raymond, you get a sticker. Phil B, you probably have 8,000 stickers. You also get a sticker. If you want to be on the show and tell next week, it's super easy. Go to our Google Plus page at plus.google.com slash plus symbol Adafruit and look for the post where I say, hey, post here on this comment here and you'll get added to the circle because we have to add you to a circle and then we can invite you and then every week at 9.30 Eastern time, p.m., whatever, you yeah. get an invite, you'll show up at the show and tell. Next week, show up a project. It's like, nobody showed a project this week, pretty much. And it's okay. It's so okay. The, we understand. The bad news is it says we're broadcasting to YouTube, but it is. That's isn't. a lie? No, it just says, it says uh, coming, it's starting soon. Really? So, um, and in the, in the Wirecast setup, it says we're not broadcasting to Ustream. But that's not true, because we actually are. Are we? Yeah, we are. We're, we're in Bizarro land. Yeah. And speaking of Bizarro land. Yeah. Let's go to the next thing. Yeah, so anyways. Um, well, I'm going to talk about, I'm, whoa, hold on, sorry. I'm on top of Harvard. Sorry, Harvard. <laughs> more testing. Okay, well, I'm going to talk about this chick. Yeah, um, I'll, uh, I'll get you over here. So okay. this is something we posted up on the blog. We might be doing a series of comic posts because you're a comic book fan. I, I read comics. Yeah. I read some comics. What, what is your favorite comic, would you say? If you, wow. Which one have you reread the most? Which one have I reread the most? Wow, I don't even know. Jeez, I mean, like I kind of read like, the classics a lot, yeah. like Watchmen and, and Killing Joke. Yeah. Kind of like morbid stuff. Dark Knight, <laughs> Dark, Dark Knight Returns. Mouse is, is a really good comic. I mean, that's yeah. kind of older, but it's like it's you know interesting, like historical, um, nonfiction, uh, biography as, as comic. I kind of like I kind of like, I mean I don't I don't know if comic books. Are, I don't own that many comic books because like now it's all digital, which I really like. Yeah. Um. So. One of the reasons I wrote an article on Make a long time ago was like, what's the best maker comic hero? Yeah. And I think there were a lot of people thought it was um, Iron Man. Well, because he's an MIT grad and yeah. he like makes stuff. But then like there was like one guy from Germany who said it was like like Daffy Duck's like second uncle Gadget Duck or Gadget something. Gadget Duck. That, yeah. And it's true. They like they have the duck that he was like a tinker. Yeah. So, um, so uh, this. Although Iron Man is like, yeah. Pretty good too. So this new, so we might have some posts because you read comics, I read comics. A lot of people here at Adafruit read comics, and uh, one of the cool things is in this new Batman series, um, Robin uh, or potential Robin, I should say. That's a big debate. It's a big potential debate. Potential Robin. But, big debate. You cannot but, say that she's Robin. But, but this character is an electrical engineer. Yeah, she's an E. In Gotham City. Yeah. Not not the typical, oh, like, she's a hacker, computer hacker. I like that she's not just a computer hacker. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I'm a little tired of, like, oh, we have a woman, and, like, she has to do something, but we don't want her to wear, like, a skin-tight outfit. Okay, we'll make her a hacker. And I'm kind of like, uh, well, like, it's okay. And, like, I'm, you know, if you're going to... Um, uh, paralyzed Batgirl, you might as well make her a computer hacker, but I kind of like that she's an EE. That's cool. Yeah, she builds her own taser. She builds a taser. Yeah. Um, she's like a teenager. She made a wave bubble yet? <laughs> no, I'm hoping I'm hoping in like the next uh, next month maybe. But so yeah, so she's an EE and she uh, she works on the electrical grid. She's actually um, like an electrical worker. Yeah. But she's also an electronics engineer, so she has both. She can draw some acts and stuff. 
And yeah, she's uh, she's pretty pissed, and uh, she has purple hair, and she's E, and uh, she may be part of the next maybe Robin. I don't know. Un unclear. Yeah. The creators, of course, won't say because they want people to buy these comics. So they keep kind of bringing her in, but like nothing really happens. Yeah. But anyways, I, I like the the Robin. She's had like three issues just about her. Yeah, I like the Robin in Dark Knight Returns. That was cool. Yeah, but she wasn't like an E. No, no, but things are changing. And she was like thirteen. Yeah, but the idea that Robin was a female was a big, big deal. I thought there are a lot of guy Robins. Yeah. Well, there was another girl Robin. But she was like, no, I, she wasn't very, good, in my opinion, yeah. a good one. Oh, which com which comic course, is this, by the way? And of course, they killed her. Which comic is this, by the way? This is the um, the DC Comics New Fifty Two, like Batman series. She's been in a couple of the different yeah. ones, so she bounces around. Yeah, it's cool. I, I this this could be a future thing. I mean, every time there's. This I just hope they don't kill her because, like, women in these comics. There was Batgirl's always getting paralyzed. They get killed. Yeah. They like they love killing chicks. Like they're like, oh, you're like Batman's girlfriend. You're gonna last like two issues. Yeah. I'm gonna kill you in some gruesome way. So I think I think she's gonna live. Yeah. I also like, kill Robins too. Yeah. They love killing Robins. I'm so tired of Batman girlfriends getting killed. I want to do a. I would I would stop everything if I could and write a storyline where all of Batman's ex girlfriends team up and kill Batman. That, they're just, they're just well, tired. yeah. They're just tired of it. They're like every time you date someone. Like the, like the few that survived, you know. Every time you date someone, Batman, they're like I'm so scarred for life. They, 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 they <laughs> Every every girl you date, uh, date uh, Batman, they die. So we have to kill you. You can't date anyone, you know. Yeah. So uh, okay. that'd be a fun arc. You know, all right, right. this yeah. is a big debate. Anyways. Yeah. All right. So anyways, she's cool. So if you read if you read DC Comics, pick up like I think Detective Comics number sixteen or whatever she's in it. Yeah. So cool. um, we had some other news stories, but when I was scrambling, um, they. Uh, they got, got deleted. Moved, they, they got moved around, so we're gonna. Get, well, they just got moved out of order. Um, this came up this week. This is um, the. Uh, I'll Ooh. remove us. Hi. This is the Carl Sagan mini pov. Spoke pov. Uh, spoke pov. Sorry. It's spoke pov, and it's Carl Sagan, and he's like winking at you, which is exactly what you want, Carl yeah. Sagan. Yeah. And that's from the spoke pov. Yeah. Pure data fruit. So. Um, more news and things. Uh, this week. This is kind of an interesting story I want to talk about. So uh, Logitech Aqua hires the uh, design firm after their Kickstarter. Oh, so yeah. this is an interesting thing. So Kickstarter is starting to turn into something I don't think a lot of people expected. Someone made like some iPhone accessory thing, yeah. and Logitech um, just decided to hire them. So now they're working there. Yeah. So the, it's it's now becoming if you want to work for a company like you know doing industrial design, go do a, a Kickstarter and make yeah. it successful. It's so. kind of like a. Um like a portfolio, but like it's like a, lot, a living portfolio. Yeah. So the big question is, um, if you're a maker and you want to turn pro, do you get funding? Maybe. Do you do it you're on your own, bootstrap it, work a day job, and you know, uh, start out slow, kind of like what you did? Yeah, but it takes six years. Yeah. Or do you do something like go to Kickstarter, which is almost like a pre-sales or like Indiegogo or something like that, mm -hmm. like pre-sales thing. Um, in hopes of making your product, and if you do that, maybe you get funding after that, like Pebble, for instance, or maybe you just get recruited by one of these companies. Yeah. So it's very interesting. You can, add, if you're good, um, nothing can stop you now. You can. The, the money is out there. The opportunities are out there. So um, if anyone's ever thinking about doing designs and products and really doing it, um, there doesn't seem to be the same barriers there used to be. So. Yeah. That came up in news. Um, you were in the news. The White House tweeted you this week. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll take this away for a second. Um, this is uh, the White House Twitter feed. Um, they linked to you, um, Obama to curb patent holding firms. So this was a big news story. Um, there's some patent troll legislation. Yeah, that they're, be they're working on it. And I asked, uh, asked Obama to work on it. Yeah. And, and here, uh, he said he's working on it. And here you are. Oh, wait, there I am. Here you are from before asking Obama questions. Yeah. So. Um, that's exciting. Uh, next up, some manufacturing Monday. So these are our um, GPSs. Um, we stack them up. Sometimes. Yes. Sometimes <laughs> so, we ziggurat. Yeah. And, our GPSs. And then um, a really special um, entry this week um, is a series of photos that uh, John Janier did. Yeah. So every month, the first Monday of the month, John takes beautiful photos of something here. Last week it was a pick and place. This week the reels. Feeders. The, the, sorry, the feeder. Feeders. The feeder of a moogie. Moogie. That's what the, my title is. For yes. This. But it, uh, John took uh, photos of one of the feeders. And, uh, let's look at these feeders. Yeah, let's look at these. They're gorgeous. I look at these every day. 
So I mean, they're very durable. They have yeah. to last like millions of millions upon millions of uh, uh, actuations. Yeah. And they're hydraulic, which I think is really neat. They use a, a hydraulic system for actuation, but the the hydraulic um, action is actually in the feeder. Whereas yeah. our last pick in place, the, the 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 smaller MDC one, it was a mechanical advance, and the hammer was actually on the machine, which is lower cost, but it meant that it wasn't as um, well. So this is yeah. a feedback circuit in here too. Like it it, it won't skip uh, advance. Like if the pressure isn't as good or something, or if it misses, it'll go again. Like it's actually got a feedback loop. Yeah. So all the folks out there that um, love all the photos that John's doing. Uh, we're, we're talking about maybe doing uh, prints of these in some way, and the, the, these reels, uh, sorry, these uh, feeder. This, this feeder. I know, it was uh, a reel. Is, is, is beautiful. So um, in, the, in the chat, um, John's in there, um, please, folks, uh, say if you would like these, because it'd be a good indicator, and like what you think is a reasonable price for a print. You know, this is. Yeah, like a, maybe. Yeah. Like a 20, yeah, or a poster 12, or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, like would you want something like this on your wall? Because it kind of looks like. You know, some science fiction gun, but what it actually is is a um, feeder. And then one of them, like this, is just like it's just beautiful metal. Yeah, it's nice machine. You know, this this belongs in a museum. It's fantastic. So, okay, moving right along. We're a little late tonight because of all the tech stuff. Um, packet the mailbag. Here's packet. All right. On mailbag, just a quick note to say that after two nights of soldering, squinting, and tiny things and watching TV, I got my ice tube clock working without any real issues at all. The hardest part was getting wires from the tube to go in the PCB. With the help of choosers, bright light, and some patience, I got them all to go. It's working great. Thanks for designing and making the kit. Very nice. You're welcome, Patrick. Yeah. Glad you enjoyed it. Okay. Next uh, community corner. Um, I skipped around this week. I already showed um, one of the things that happened in the community. That was the Carl Sagan spoke pop. Yeah. That was kind of neat. Uh, we sponsored a, uh, a, a one of these derby cars. Yeah. This is an Adafruit sponsorship, and the name of the car was Frequency. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Uh, this is Jack. This is uh, the folks that we work with for um, our badges and stickers and lots of other things. Yeah. So that's pretty neat. That's a nice derby um, car. Also in the community, Cats of Engineering. This cat is wearing a Flora GPS, and uh, it's in the Cats of Engineering section. Do check out cats. Cat. Uh, Adafruit.com slash Cats of Engineering. Data logger cat. All right, next up, mm. Adafruit Learning System. New stuff this week. We have um, some tutorials. We have Maybe some tutorials. Do you want to go through them in my head? In your head? <laughs> well, the first one. Um, oh, you have. Oh, you have. Yeah, I'm going to do the first one. The first one I'm going to do is uh, the hacker space list. So if you yeah, want to, yeah, if you ever want to build a hacker space, make a hacker space. Eric has the best list, so that's in there now. Yeah. Um, next up, um, Circuit Playground. We have an episode guide for Circuit Playground. So if you want to uh, watch. Uh, and read along or see some of the production notes or anything, it's on Yeah, we have the script, system. so if you're um, hard of hearing, you can use that as a script. Yeah. Um, or if you want to search for terms, we also yeah. have um, a, a reference resource. Yeah, and we also have uh, what an ampere is and where it came from, who made it. Um, so that's there. Next who up. made the ampere. Next up, and I'll... Uh, Oh yeah, this is a, a. We're starting out with some beagle bone black tutorials. We're starting out really like simple, because like even I'm like learning how to use uh, the beagle bone black. So this is a how to SSH using the the USB connection. So you can actually SSH through USB because it has like a, it shows up like a network, like it has a network connection. I, I actually don't understand how they did it. This is something you have to research. But yeah, you can uh, you can SSH over um, through like the USB network connection and. Uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. So okay. you need an Ethernet cable. Next up. Joust. Yeah, want to talk about this one? This is a, a fun a fun filled B project. Um, so we have these arcade connections, and people are emailing us and saying, hey, like, you know, can you run like an emulator on a, on a Pi? Is it fast enough? And we're like, yeah, we think so. And we thought, like, but, you know, if it has, like, these GPIOs, like, let's make an arcade box. And the Raspberry Pi is small enough, you know, you can fit it in a box. That's actually, I didn't have time to make one, but maybe next week I'll make one of these little arcade things. So you take an arcade stick and two buttons, and you don't even have to solder, actually, with the, our tutorial. You can actually just plug them into the GPIO cable um, with our little adapter cables. And uh, you can, like, cut a wood box. I, cigar boxes are really popular for this kind of stuff because they're, like, really good wood, and you can drill them really easily. And then, um, or you could just kind of make it out of cardboard, honestly. Yeah. And uh, make your own little emulator, and we show how to install um, emulator from the uh, Pi Store, and you can play Joust. Yeah, if only we had a video. 
We do. Set the time machine for the 1980s. It's a golden age of video arcade games. Our tutorial shows how simple it is to set up the super affordable Raspberry Pi for bitchin' arcade or console games. Gets better, Adafruit has genuine arcade joysticks and buttons. Connecting these to the Raspberry Pi is simple. For most setups, you don't even need any soldering. Totally tubular! There's lots more videos on our YouTube channel. Okay, or visit next, learn. Uh, time please, travel Please Tuesday. buy some arcade stuff so yeah. we can afford to get Phil B more fun jackets. <laughs> There's a Phil B jacket club. All right, next up, um, this is Time Travel Tuesday, 1938. This is the first machine to produce intelligible human-like sounds on June 9th, 1938. Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Name is Pedro the Vodder. It was a keyboard operated with a spectrum synthesis device capable of mimicking many farm animals in addition to the human voice. The inventors were Homer, Homer Dudley and Richard Rias, Stanley Watkins, and there was a YouTube video. But, that sounds really um, scary. Yeah. Okay. Next up, <laughs> cochlear implants, June 3rd, 1899. It's able to help people hear better. And further back in time, 1896. This is the first radio from our uh, from Marconi. Go Marconi, it's your birthday. Go Marconi, and, uh, it's not your birthday, but in you know. the UK for He's cool. improvements in transmitting electrical impulses and signals and apparatus. Therefore, June second, eighteen ninety six, first patent for radio. Okay, next up, wearable Wednesday. So this week we have some cool stuff. A um, couple of neat things came in. Uh, Bunny, uh, everybody knows Bunny. He visited and he showed us some really cool stuff. And uh, I want you to explain what this is, but um, he posted photos on the Hilo Tech Group uh, yeah. in, uh, at MIT. And so what are these things, Lady Ada? This is actually a project with um, G. Chi, who is in the Hilo Tech Group. And like, um, as you can see, there's like a little microcontroller, and it's actually on a flex circuit that's a sticker. And um, the cool thing is it's, Z, it's a Z co uh, conductive sticker only, so you can actually like have um, the circuit be like whatever and then whatever however you stick it like it'll only conduct down which is kind of neat um, because like it's you, most conductive stuff is a conductive like X and Y and Z but um, this is Z only and then you can um, lay out copper traces with copper tape we're using a conductive ink and then you can stick the stickers down to light them up and stuff I don't know I think it's neat yeah and then here's another another view yeah so this is the the sheet so you showed the stats and we were talking about it and um, it's it's kind of neat technology because it's like you, you just cut out the pieces you need. Mm. And um, the neat thing about this is that this uh, panel, there's a microcontroller and actually can t like it, it, the microcontroller tests the entire sheet. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, the suspenders that everyone noticed that I'm wearing. Yes, uh, they're lovely. Yeah, here's a couple photos. So this is the Pac-Man suspenders. Uh, I'm going to get me out of the way here. Uh, Pac-Man suspenders, um, this is our model. I have a couple models this week. He's fantastic. And uh, we also, of course, have video. Thanks to recent advancements in pants lifting technology, we were able to share these charming pixel suspenders with you, stitched with conductive thread and powered by Flora, Adafruit's wearable electronics platform. They're perfect for weddings or bar mitzvahs where you want to keep things low key during the ceremony and then take off your jacket to get the party started. You can make your own pixel suspenders with our complete tutorial on the Adafruit learning system and the link is in the description below. You can grab this Pac-Man inspired animation or code up your own outrageous designs and even add a sensor like the microphone in our VU meter necktie or the motion sensor in the sparkle skirt. thumbs up if you like this project and uh, subscribe to the Adafruit channel on YouTube for more wearable projects every Wednesday. Okay, yeah. so this is um, a GIF, but I wanted to show folks. So okay. if, um, Let's turn it off and back on so we can see it'll be fun. Okay, so here's the Pac-Man. Yeah, see Pac-Man. And then there's the red, pink, blue, and orange ghosts. Yeah, and then, and then here's a pill. The pill's over here. And as soon as the Pac-Man eats the pill, pill, they turn blue. And then, then Pac-Man chases them. them and eats them. And it's, it's happening behind you. Yeah. 
But so. then, yeah, he eats them, and so they have, um, it goes in a big chain all the way around. Yeah. I guess so. you guys could just, uh, well, you could just spin me. Yeah. So then it starts again. Okay, so then it, there's another Pac-Man, and yeah. then there's just the dot, and then okay. it'll, it'll start when, in a second. When, when yeah. should I turn around? When should I turn around? Turn now. around now. Now, 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 now. Okay. So yeah, now he's, he's eating the ghosts, and the ghosts disappear. Yeah. So it's kind of like a 1D Pac-Man design. I mean, you can just do any design yeah. you want. We wanted to do something that was kind of fun and a little geeky. But um, yeah. you could do rainbows. You could well, do like... What's interesting is if you, if you look at it, um, you know, most people recognize it as Pac-Man because it's yellow and it's chasing multiple colors. And, and then, then it eats it, the white dot. And, it gets, and then it eats the dot and then the, the other things. It's one of the few games that you can just, with just color and You could motion. probably play 1D, like, like line only Pac-Man. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, next, uh, 3D Thursday. Um, lots of stuff going on in the 3D world. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to, uh, I think, what's the biggest news. Big news. Um, MakerBot has 50,000 square feet of a new factory yeah. in Brooklyn. We, in, have, well, we have like 11,000 square feet. So yeah, it's four we, times bigger than Adafruit. Yeah, we have around 12,000 square feet in Soho in Manhattan. And uh, MakerBot, 50,000. Uh, square feet in Brooklyn, yeah, and uh, we're trying to get more space in our building. Um, all these maker companies are doing really well. I know they've been working on this for a while. They just have a new they have a new building. Um, uh, mm. They have uh, like headquarters. They and have then, the headquarters. And then they have a factory. And a factory. So here's a few photos from um, from the event. So here's the little flag outside the building. Here's Bree cutting the. Um, Thing every year, someone has to buy all these big scissors. There's probably a big scissor factory somewhere. Um, and then here's some shots, just people assembling MakerBots. And then here's our shipping area, which all shipping areas look the same. This is what our looks like too. Yeah, um, just kids. <laughs> so for the folks out there, just to pay some bills, um, if you want to get your dad a uh, MakerBot, you get 10% off. So it's actually a really good deal. Um, give dad something that he can use to make other things. So that's MakerBot. Um, don't forget, Father's Day 2013 is the code. All right, Pi Day. We'll just do a quick thing with Pi Day real quick. Um, every Friday we do uh, Pi posts. Mm -hmm. And the posts that I picked this week that I thought were really cool to showcase, one is someone took a Pebble watch and they used that to control their... Um, Raspberry Pi. Their, the Raspberry Pi that then controls their media center. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, for the folks who have questions about stuff... Uh, just hold them to the end. We'll get to them just a little bit. And then the other one is a Raspberry Pi controlled gate, and it uses our Perma Proto. So this gate will open and close um, based on all sorts of things. Motion, um, you wave your hand, and the yeah. gate will open for you. I love these like projects that take the Raspberry Pi and then they add like GPIO and they do stuff. I think it's so cool because it's yeah. it's even though there has been embedded Linux computers that did that, it was always like really hard to get the GPIO out or like. You know, it was like it was 1.8 volt logic, so it was really hard to yeah. interface. I guess this is like 3.3, easy go. Okay. Honk. Real quick, um, yeah, there was, I don't know if they can hear the honking There's anymore. like a party. Yeah, that's yeah. true, they probably can't hear it. Yeah. There's a big party downstairs. Okay, uh, the code is Father's Day 2013. I mean, Let's, there's a party in here too. Yeah. This is a party. Let's um, go to the new products lady. New products. New, new products. Yeah. Now that I got the audio with uh, all of our stuff now, I can, I can work on the new products. New song. products. Yeah. New products. It's time for new products. Okay. Okay. First up, um, we, we have, have John in the store now. We, yeah, we're selling John. He'll come to your house. Um, we have a, the Transistor Man shirt in uh, 4XL. So yes. by popular demand, a lot of people ask for it, and we got them. And this print is really big too, which is cool. Yeah. Next up, uh, these are in stock now. These are the Zively. Um, uh, packs that starter we put kits. in starter kits. Yeah, that we so put it's, in a, store. it's a embed and an arm. Uh, so the embed, which is I'm covering it, and the embed application board, which you plug the embed in. It's like a no solder, like audio, Ethernet, USB, USB, LCD, potentiometer, RGB LED, accelerometer, all sorts of stuff, sensor board that you can plug it in. And it's basically a no solder way to get started with Zively, which is. Um, the new name of Cosm, which is the new name for uh, Patch Bay, which is the correct way of saying Pachubi. <laughs> so yeah. um, if you've ever used Pachubi, Patch Bay, or Cosm, uh, chances are you're going to be using uh, Zively. And yeah. uh, Zively now has a starter kit. We're doing it with them. You get a free Zively account. And um, when you buy all the stuff, it's also a little cheaper than just buying it separately. So it's a good deal. Yeah. Brought to you by Zively. Okay. Um, next up. Uh these are fantastic. 
Handy. So I'm going to show all four. And then we'll go to the well, overhead. Well, there's two. But there's four photos. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, and the little adapters, too. You want to No, you should have showed these. Yeah, yeah. These, these are... Yeah, these are the... 2.1 millimeter jack and uh, barrel connector, uh, two alligator clips. And I'll show them on the overhead. Or you can show the photos. I just the photos are really good. Okay. Well, let's show them the... I mean, we, haven't, we have an overhead. Well, I'll show, I'll show them I spend a lot of time setting up these cameras and make them okay, work. It's sorry. hard. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's focus. Yeah. We should focus Focus, on, focus, focus. on these new products. Okay, good. Uh, let's focus. So yeah, this one has a um, uh, jack connector, so you can like plug a power supply into it, and it will turn your power supply into like a um, uh, uh, like it'll turn a, a wall adapter into like a benchtop power supply, where you can then like plug it into and then and then attach to your circuit. And then the other side is the 2.1 millimeter barrel plug, um, also two alligator clips, and so. This is really good for um, if you have like an Arduino or like a Beagle Bone, you want to run off a battery pack. Um, you can use this to connect like some wires or battery pack or solar panel or whatever without having to do any more wiring. So it's a just very easy way and then, to, uh, so to connect wants to know how, power. How good are the uh, alligator clips? These are excellent alligator clips. These are the best. Are these Lady 8 approved? These are custom made for me. Okay. So they're like nice molded connectors and they have a little bit of heat shrink here kind of hard to see, but they have a little heat shrink to protect it. And they have uh, good, strong wires. I mean, this is like, this is the best. Yeah. Okay. They did approve. They did designed. Okay. I expect them. They made them. Okay, next up. Here are, these are these are super handy, too. You, you went on a handy binge. I went on a handy binge. Okay. What are these, Lady Ada? Um, so we have the first two of four uh, USB shells. And these are kind of like for what, making DIY cables. Uh, and we have USB A um, mail or plug, and we also have uh, USB micro B, which is, you know, commonly used for phones. So one you can plug into a computer, and one you can plug into a phone. And then let me find where they are. Oh, here they are. So um, it comes with like three, or in the micro B case, it comes with four pieces, um, two shells that snap together, um, the metal piece and that goes in the middle and the thing that makes this nice is it's very easy to solder to the tabs. So on said overhead. Oh I see some dim. Um, so this is the micro B shell. So it's a micro B connector and it snaps into the shell and it only goes one way, so if I get it wrong I just have to do it the other way. Hold on. Is it this way? One second. This half, yeah, it goes into this half, and then you know you can solder. There's like three tabs on this side and two tabs on this side, and they're, and they're actually fairly simple to solder to. Um, you can do it without like super fine pitch soldering tools, and then you can snap this closed, and then you can you know you can reopen it if you just pry on it a little bit. But then you have a micro B connector. So this is like if you want to connect to your phone or something, or you want to make your own charger or something, and you want to have it plug into micro B, um, micro B it is. And then we also have uh, USB A, which is what's on your computer. So if you can plug this into a computer. So um, very similar, there's four connectors over here. Um, it fits nicely into this shell. And then um, you solder your wires, and then you can close the other half. And it's nice and protected. And you can uh, make your own USB cables connector. So this is actually like, these are pretty handy. Like if you never needed to um, connect to USB stuff, you might be like, well, like yeah. why don't I just get a cable? But if you ever need to like, like for example, I was working with a microcontroller that had USB connection. And like I was working on, on a breadboard and this allowed me to just solder some breadboard wires to this and then I could plug into my computer. I didn't have to like make a PCB so, with a jack and all this. So stuff. where do you, so you can just solder wires directly on here. Yeah, that's, that's there's, what you, do. you can solder wires with those four little connectors and it's, it's much, much easier than if you take a cable and then you strip it and then you have to connect to it and then it's like it can break and then you need heat shrink. This is like solder and go, very, very easy and very fast. So, so yeah, you can see the four contacts. So they're yeah. brought out, and they're and they're easy to solder to. That's cool. Very handy. All right. Very very handy. And then you can you know you, you can take it apart after you're done. Like I just took this apart. Like it's not a permanent connection. I yeah. mean it's solid. Like it snaps, but you can pry it with a fingernail to open them up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, we got these. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'll just show one of these. Yeah. I'll show the. Uh, I'm gonna show all the photos. 
Yeah, this is um, just a, a longer version of the Litex wire that we have the shorty version. This one has way more LEDs. It has 30 LEDs. It's a meter and a half long, and it comes on a spool, and uh, it's quite nice. And we have it with uh, white LEDs on black, which is this, which shows up very nicely. And um, there's like LEDs every like two inches or something. And then it comes with a little battery pack, and it has a couple different modes, like a flickery sort of uh, star mode, um, flash on off mode, a uh, sort of pulsing mode, and then um, a really, I think it's either a really slow pulse or it's just like half brightness. So yeah, so there's a couple different modes. And um, what's nice about this is it's, it's, it's completely fabric ribbon. So you can stitch this onto um, clothing or fashion or projects. It's completely, it's basically just fabric with the stainless steel. And then the LED is bonded on and then covered with um, some like epoxy. So I don't know, I mean, I wouldn't like go crazy washing this, but it, you can hand wash it without a problem. It won't run uh, while it's wet because it, it's the wires or um, the thread is exposed, but you can put this on a project, wash it afterwards, and it'll work just fine. Just dry it when you're done. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is good stuff. And then we also have it white LEDs on white fabric. This is the, on the back. Very cool. Okay. I'll put this away. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next up, and I, I got to tell everybody, get ready. Um, you're going to be blown away. This next thing is so cool. Um, this is, I think, kind of an Adafruit classic. Cool. Oh. Hold on. So this, yeah, this is the art, which is this is John's like best photo ever. So yeah. this is not a Photoshop job. That is actually a photo yeah. of a seven-segment RGB LED. Um, somebody emailed us and suggested we carry this, and I was like, that is so cool. Just look at it. Uh, just look at it for a while. Just look at it. Just look at it. And then put us there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Um, so each of the seven segments has an RGB LED in it, and it's, it's fairly bright. This is one inch tall um, digit, so it's, it's kind of big. Um, it's actually kind of the only size they had. They didn't have any other sizes. Um, so uh, you can change the color of any segment totally individually, uh, which is really neat. So you can like, do weird stuff like make this image. Uh, the only thing is that it has um, one anode and 21 cathodes. So you have like, you need like something that can drive like 21 LEDs at a time. So we don't have a backpack. We're kind of looking in maybe you're going to have something. Until then, you can use um, a couple 555s, chain them, or like if you just have a lot of pins on your microcontroller yeah. or an uh, IO expander. Does the decimal point light up, or is that just The a... decimal point does not light up. I don't know why they designed it, but they, they have the dot there, but it doesn't have LEDs in it, and like they don't have that as an option. Uh, you know, maybe they just use the shell. They from... use the shell from something else. Uh, I, yeah. But I don't, I'm kind of like, this is, doesn't make... I'm not so into that, but you know, this is the trade-off. This is the only place it could get. Yeah. It wasn't like I had like 16 suppliers of seven-segment RGB LED yeah. things that I could choose. This is the only one I could I could really get. Okay. So this one doesn't have a decimal point. I'll show. But it has seven segments. I'll show. So, do you want to show this on the overhead? Yeah, I can show this okay. on the overhead. Whoa! So it's so bright that I actually have to diffuse it. So I'm going to take a little piece of paper and I'll. Uh, yeah. I'll diffuse it. So yeah, this is the. Well, maybe it's so bright, I actually need to diffuse it twice. So yeah, you can see um, the RGB. I mean, it's really, really bright, so it's kind of like too bright. But um, I'm doing like a color cycle, so you can see the segments change color slowly. And um, there's a lot of pins on this guy. So on the back, you can see just like how many pins. And I have this controlled by a uh, PWM driver. Um, but yeah, this is a lot of pins. But it does, you know, this is the way to do it. If you want, if you want to have an RGB, you know, seven segment, this is it. Um, yeah. We don't have an eagle part for it, but we do have the data sheet and everything. So hopefully somebody will make one, and then, yeah. or we'll make one eventually, and we'll uh, we'll see if we can figure out a way to make a backpack for it. Yeah. Here's some more photos of it with it off. Yeah. It so out. yeah, this is an easier way. You can see all the pins. It's not breadboard friendly. Um, there's a decimal. Yeah, decimal doesn't light up. Yeah. And, and check uh, the data sheets for more specs, like actual brightness per segment and, you know, the yeah. pin out and all that. That's in the data sheet. I don't, I don't have that um, memorized. But, yeah, you can make that RGB. So, yeah. yeah, this is kind of neat. We'll see who comes up with the first RGB LED clock and, you know. Yeah, I mean, they, they are a little 
little bit um, pricey. I kind of wish I could have gotten them for a much cheaper price, but the, it is a rare, unusual thing, and the market for these is very small. <laughs> I've never seen these in any product, yeah. so yeah, they're a little pricey. Beautiful stuff. But they're beautiful. Yeah. Okay. And then we have two more things. Uh, do you want to do the updated product or do you want to do the new product? Uh, new. Let's do new. New first. Okay. All right. This is a big deal too. This next one's a yeah. big deal. All right. Here it is. It's a push button. It's a push button. <laughs> um, yeah. This is actually um, some people in the forum were talking about this a while ago and I was like, oh, I'm like actually working on something like that. Um, this is a uh, toggle push button for uh, high, fairly high voltages and high currents. So this allows you to... Um, push on, push off a power supply, um, 3 to 14 volts, up to 3 amps. So it's it's pretty beefy, but I want to make it also small enough that you could fit on a breadboard. Um, it comes with a 12 millimeter tactile button that snaps in, but you can also put your own push button in. But yeah, you press once to turn on, press once to turn it off. And there's also an off uh, kill switch. So when that off pin, which is the fourth pin down, is connected to a high voltage, like pretty much any voltage um, above one volt, it'll automatically kill the power. So it's a way for projects to turn themselves off, which you can't do with a mechanical on-off switch. So the, the, the two benefits are, you know, it's compact, it's, it's, it's simple operation, and you can have a kill switch, so you can force it off. Um, if you have a mechanical switch, you can't do that. Um, the trade-off is, however, that it uses a pass FET to turn the power on and off. So there's no air isolation, which for some people, they need to have an air isolation. It needs to be completely isolated. Uh, this doesn't supply that. Um, if the output is higher than the input, the body diode of the FET will um, turn on, and so you'll get back leakage. So that's kind of rare, but if you have a project that has something like that, um, not a good idea either to use something like this. Um, it's uh, it's limited in voltage. You can only use it from 3 volts to 14 volts. Actually, it works down to 2 volts, but the spec for the um, NAND gate that I use is 3 to you know 14, so I'd say 3 to 14. And um, the pass spec can do 3 amps. You can actually maybe do a little bit more, but you know, 14 volts and 3 amps is at the, at the max. Other than that, it, uh, it starts heating up quite a bit. Okay. So I can do a demo. Let's do a demo. Let's do a demo. Let's move this thing out of the way. So I'm actually going to demo, and I'm also going to use the, uh, so this is a big reel of LED stuff, LED strip, which is a great load if you need a, a load ever. And I'm actually going to use my, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I'll get us. Yeah, we're out here. Actually, <laughs> so this uses the uh, that barrel jack to um, alligator clips. And I'm going to plug this in. And then this is connected to the uh, LED strip over here. And then I'm going to power this. Hold on. Okay. So, ooh, super bright. So um, when I press the button, it turns off. Wait, sorry. My wires are coming loose. OK. So I push to turn it off, and the camera freaks out. And then I can push to turn on. You can see over here there's a red LED that turns on. I added a red LED so you know when it's powered, which is kind of nice. And then this is that kill line. So if I touch this to here, it automatically kills. And then I have to press again to turn it back on. So. You can turn it on by pressing the button, turn it off by pressing the button, or turn it off by um, raising the off or kill uh, line high. So it's kind of an easy way to like add um, a, a pretty intense power controlling switch to a project if you want an elegant push button or you want it to be on your breadboard. Um, it's nice and small and uh, kind of handy. I like the kill switch because it, for some projects that, self, that you want to turn itself off, it has that ability. And it's all analog, so it's pretty simple. And uh, it doesn't use a lot of current, so it, the quiescent current is like uh, 0.5 microamps, maybe even less. Um, this is the max. The day corner of the day sheet, the max is, is 0.5 microamps. So you can use this for a battery-powered project. Okay. All right. Up. So yeah, we've got uh, a light poly battery, so it's for charging lipo batteries. This is the uh, charger, and it has this really big capacitor, which is a, a stabilization cap. So it is necessary for solar because otherwise, solar is so unstable, you need a big capacitor. Every solar charger out there that's worth its salt will have a really big cap. Um, it has a load output, which is kind of nice. It'll automatically do load switching. So instead of charging and discharging the battery, it will shunt the load from whatever your power supply is. Um, DC jack for solar, USB also if you want to power it from USB. I'm going to um, charge it from 
uh, an Arduino. I'm gonna fake it. I'm gonna fake it till I make it. Someone wants to know why don't why not use a solid cap instead? Um, electrolytics are solid. Okay. Okay. Not sure exactly what the question is. Um, so this is the red power good LED, and then there's a yellow charging LED. When the battery is fully charged, the LED turns green. But we'd have to wait a while. So we're not going to hang out for that. But uh, you also have to believe me, it turns green when it uh, turns on, which is really nice because you actually you know when your um, battery is fully charged and you can uh, go use it. So this is really nice. It's for 5.5 or 6-volt panels. All the panels in our store are 6 volts. You have to use a 6-volt panel. The, the way the solar charger is designed, it can't use 12 volts. It can't use 3 volts. It can't use 7 volts. 6 volts. It can use 5.5 volts, but that's really rare. Just are you have a 6-volt panel kicking around, or you can get one. Um, and it uses a not <coughs> max PowerPoint, but something close enough that you get all the efficiency benefits of max PowerPoint without the expense of like a buck converter and like stabilization and like a jitter source, whatever. Max PowerPoint, it's like not worth it really until you get to like 10 watts of solar. So this is very good for like one, two, three, up to five watts. Uh, it's just as efficient pretty much. And it's perfect for charging LiPos or... Uh, does it trickle charge or does it keep it high? How does it, how it, does it charge? It just charges the battery. It charges the battery as much as possible from the solar cell. It um, does this neat trick where it pulls as much current as possible while keeping the solar panel above a certain voltage. It has a, a built-in feedback loop. Um, so it's, it'll trickle charge if you don't have much light, but if you have like, good sunlight and it's directly in the sun, it will like, full-on charge it up to 500 milliamps. And um, if you use our, like, we have a really big solar panel, like this big, it's like a four watt panel. And you can get about five, I've, I got like 500 milliamps out of it yeah. in sunlight here in New York. I remember, we did it on the roof. Yeah, we went on the roof. Yeah. Okay. On the roof. So it's updated, we have tons in stock. Yay, it's summer. We'll be actually doing some neat projects with uh, the solar charger that we have in stock, and we can make them so much better on our new pick and place. Okay. Um, that was new products. Yay, new. All right, we got through it. Okay, uh, real quick, anything you saw that we have that's in stock there is 10% off, off Father's Day. And this code lasts all week long, so you don't have to buy stuff tonight, but you should um, because it... It takes like a week sometimes. Yeah, to, to figure it. Especially if you want to pick the yeah. ground shipping, which is great, you know, if you get free ground shipping. But it can take a, it can take a couple of days, depending on where you are. If you're in California, it can take a week. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that we've noticed with um, our, our show and the audio, you get so excited during new products, I have to adjust the volume. I did? You did. You got so excited. Ooh. Yeah, you're very, you're very chill during the news and you're... I'm hanging out. We're doing stuff and well, then new I'm, products... You know why? Because I'm used to having to yell to, to reach that mic yeah. when I'm over here. Yeah. So I'm, I, have to, I have to get back into my chill zone. Yeah, but I can also look on the... But my, audio is, my audio came off? No, uh, something else happened. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but it's cool because like, I feel like we're, as we're approaching the fourth year of Ask an Engineer, which is coming up soon, yeah. um, you know, the show is upgrading and doing cool stuff. We have a permanent home here uh, at the Adafruit factory where uh, it yeah, sits here. Yeah, we're here. This is it. Um, okay. Are you prepared to see us here for quite a while? <laughs> yeah. Um, next up, uh, we've got a few minutes for questions. A few moments, we're gonna, yeah. We're going to do it. So here's questions, and then we'll do a trivia question. Okay. All right. Ask away. Uh, here's a bunch. Um, let's see. Uh, how about doing a show from the roof? No, we're talking about the roof from our, where our apartment is. Uh, I guess we could go on the roof of the Adafruit factory. We but wouldn't get internet. Yeah, we wouldn't have internet. We'd have internet there. So it would be a very dull show. Um, <laughs> yes, we do ship to the UK. Uh, what is the moment of Zener? Um, the moment of Zener is a... Uh, it's like when you get into your chill zone. Yeah, so on the Daily Show, they have your moment of Zen. We said, oh, we should do the moment of Zener. That's a Zener diode. Uh, next up, what are the roles behind us? Um, those are roles of bubble wrap. Gigantic roles of bubble wrap. Yeah. Um, next up, uh, what is the Adafruit Gemma? Oh, the Adafruit Gemma is a uh, project I am still working on, but I'm almost done with. Um, it's a small wearable platform that is based on the AT Tiny 85. It's very small and it's very low power and very lightweight. So it's for projects where even a Flora, which is fairly small, uh, might be a little bit too big or too complicated. It, it can do very simple stuff. It has only a couple pins, and uh, it's it's a little less expensive. So it's for uh, easier projects, simpler projects. Okay. 
Uh, next up, um, what's shipping to the UK like? Um, just add any product to the store and then click Estimate Shipping. You have First Class as a choice, Express Mail, UPS. You can look at all the options there. Um, and we're very close to the post office, and we're shipped daily, so yeah. we move really fast. I want to measure UV. Can you make source a radiometer breakout? Ooh, I have never heard of that. Yeah. I don't know one. Okay. What's the longest running low power microcontroller project you've worked on, battery operated? Um, we haven't done actually a lot of, of long term projects because you know usually I have to work on something, then I have to work on something else a day later. Yeah. So uh, you know we built some data loggers and you know got them to run for like a couple days off of a nine volt. Yeah. Next up, uh, why is Adafruit in Manhattan? We get this question all the time because yeah. the, the assumption is the rent. Why is, are we here? The rent is so expensive. Uh, why wouldn't we go to Brooklyn? Well, it turns out the rent that we negotiated here in our factory in Soho is very good. In fact. Um, it would probably even be more expensive, or as a, or, or more in, in Brooklyn, and Especially so in Dumbo it would be much more expensive. Yeah, in the Dumbo area it would be more expensive. So we got a great deal, and the building likes us a lot. We're a zone for manufacturing. Um, the building is a manufacturing building. We help them be uh, a manufacturing uh, place. So it's worked out really well. Um, it's not. We certainly could save money if we moved out to the middle of nowhere in like you know a desert or like you know anywhere. Um, outside of a major city, but then we would be outside of a major city. Yeah. So um, we uh, have goals of uh, doing big media things, like ask an engineer. We think this is going to be a great show, yeah. and we'll have more guests, and we'll do stuff. We have our circuit playground thing. We have uh, Becky's wearable Wednesday stuff. Uh, we want to be in the, the heart of fashion and art and design. Yeah. And where uh, else can you uh, just publicly wear uh, Pac-Man suspenders, and nobody will question you? Yeah. Um, so we like it here, and uh, New York is a fantastic place. We have um, the media showing up all the time. They're filming here. Um, there's press that's talking to Lamore all the time. She was in the New York Times just a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, My desk was actually. Yeah. Um, there's a, a very large company that we use our services. That they had their advertising agency come out and do a big film thing. We'll be able to talk about that later. Um, yep. I would say that one of the reasons that you probably were selected. To meet the president on this on the the hangout thing was because you're uh, an entrepreneur in New York City. Yeah. You're on the New York City uh, Industrial Manufacturing Board, and I think um, when Wired put you on the cover, it was very easy for them to to, to come we, and see we you. We actually shot that cover only a couple blocks from here. Yeah. There's okay. a there's a photo studio in in the West Village. We just it was actually very close, so we walk by there all the time. I'm like, hey. And I gotta wrap up the show fast, but uh, I'll yeah. do, we'll do a couple quick questions. Uh, will we ever carry alphanumeric display seven segment to do text easily? Yeah, yeah, we might. Um, right now, we just have seven segments, and we're focusing on them. But um, yeah, well, we're probably going to carry some uh, hex type. But you know, we also have LCDs, TFTs, you know, a lot of things if you want to do text. Yeah. Um, and then uh, let's see. Um, do we know? Who else is in the building? Yeah, we actually know everybody in the yeah, building. Yeah, we know everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're very we're best very, pals. Yeah, we're very friendly with all the folks here. Um, turns out I used to work with some of the people in already in the building from a previous life of mine, so yeah. I run into them now. Um, so let's do um, trivia. Okay. <clears throat> and then right afterwards, for the pioneers out there, I am going to quickly test very quickly to see if I can broadcast to YouTube. Yeah, because, that's weird. Because inside of our new system right now, it's saying we're broadcasting only to YouTube and not to Ustream. So that's very odd. It probably uh, is like, why would you broadcast to very, two things very at Very confusing. Once? But if you want to be a pioneer, um, you know. Extra credit. Yeah, just hang out for a couple minutes afterwards. So it's trivia question time, Lady Ada. Yeah. Trivia question time. What's the what's the prize? Do you want to be a solar charger or a the, RGB? The the prize is going to be the RGB LED display. It's pretty cool looking, and you don't yeah. need a lipo battery. Okay. You will get this RGB seven segment, and you can blink it to your heart's content. Yeah. So here is the trivia question. First person to post a link to the learn guide that has the hackerspace tips, the one article that we just went over. Yeah. Wins. By Mr. Mashad. For, it's the hackerspace list. It's the tips. So one that's in the learning system. And let's see who cut and paste it first. No. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, let's just take care of the trivia okay. thing first because it'll be confusing. Um, let's see. This People are racing. People are racing to the learn system. Race, and race, race. Who is going to post it first? Do, do, do. Browsers are being fired up. 
cut and pasting is being occurring, is being done. Yeah. Let's see. It's just a link. Just a link. Oh. A tutorial. Okay. Well, the person who already won, why did you, why did you post that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> the first person to no, get it exactly the right. Somehow uh, we we can say the rules for four years, but you know. Blazer we don't say it Blazer time. fifty one fifty four. Congratulations. Uh, email you didn't, you supported. Didn't let me say the rules. Yeah, that's I know. Why. There's a lot of stuff going on tonight. I know. So okay, uh, that's it. We got in. We got in the show. We're done. Okay. Um, I don't have a cat photo tonight because uh, I just don't. Because <laughs> we're doing audio instead. Yeah, because we had to get the audio going. I don't think I have a. Um, I mean, if someone really needs to see MOSFET. There's something that says cat.jpg. Yeah, I mean, here's a photo of MOSFET. I think I can go to it. Here's MOSFET. All right, I got a cat photo. It's him. There you go. It's him in front of my uh, fume extractor. Yeah. My cat extractor. Okay. That's it. All right, Pioneer, stick around. We're going to do a quick YouTube test. Okay. Thank you. We'll see everybody next week. Um, uh, Dale, stop by. Um, Maker Fair New York. If you're in New York, yeah. call for makers. Look, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't forget. Okay. Whew. All right. And I'm going to try to end the broadcast. See you guys next week. Here's your moment of Zener. <laughs>